Uh, so the um, uh, bilingual teaching uh, course in the Central Asia and uh, Caucasus um, countries is um, uh, generously sponsored by a fairing company. Uh, initially, the, the agreement uh, was uh, uh, signed for three years, uh, for 2014, 15, and 16, to be held in Kazakhstan, Almaty, Uzbekistan, in Tashkent, and in Azerbaijan, uh, Baku. And this is a bilingual uh, uh, course in uh, uh, Russian and English uh, languages with a dual projection. And the first uh, CNCA school um, uh, uh, was held in, the, in, in Almaty, in Kazakhstan, in Alatau Sanatorium uh, in October uh, last year. Uh, the teaching faculty uh, consisted of uh, both uh, ESP members, uh, English speaking obviously, and, uh, uh, and also uh, uh, five, it, uh, the, the English speaking ESP members, Jan Lebel, uh, Francesco Chianelli, and uh, Stan Drop, and uh, five English and Russian speaking teachers, uh, Alina German, uh, from uh, uh, Israel, Gulnara Rakimova uh, from um, uh, Uzbekistan, Rima Bazarbekova from uh, 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 Kazakhstan, Gunduz Ahmatov from uh, Azerbaijan, and myself. Um, and uh, we've got uh, 45 applications for the school and uh, 26. Uh, 26 fellows were uh, selected uh, from Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and one from Kyrgyzstan. And uh, the, the course um, uh, is, was organized on the example of, of the winter school. So it, it, it was a five-day course uh, covering mo most topics in pediatric endocrinology. Uh, um, uh, with lectures, uh, students and teachers, clinical cases, reports, uh, research uh, projects, presentations by, by the fellows. So you can see the um, uh, faculty and the fellows in, uh, in um, Alatau Sanatorium. And here you can see uh, uh, Jan already showed uh, this slide on the, uh, um, one of the lectures that Stan is giving. Uh, with the dual projection, uh, one screen, uh, the one projection is in Russian and, and, and another screen with the projection in, in English. And uh, we were very lucky to have uh, um, a fellow from Georgia, uh, Irakli Pagava, who uh, had a, a previous experience in simultaneous translation. So he could translate uh, the, the English uh, uh, speaking uh, uh, teachers' lectures uh, simultaneously without taking too too much time. So we are uh, very we were very happy about that, and we asked him to uh, to participate in the second school of the um, uh, for for the Caucasus and Central Asia countries, which is. Uh, 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 w which will be organized very soon in, in three weeks uh, in the end of the October uh, in uh, Uzbekistan, in Tashkent and uh, uh, 26 fellows were already selected from 40 applications. I didn't put but I want to rem uh, remind that the um, applications deadline is uh, 30 April each year. And uh, I would like to thank very much the, the teaching faculty and uh, especially Malcolm, whose idea was uh, to organize uh, this kind of, of school and he promised to take part in, in, in this second term if it will happen. So th th and thank you, Espe, for, for this opportunity and of course, uh, fairing for the financial support. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Malika Lemusina. I'm from Kazakhstan, Astana, and my talk is about 
uh, my experience uh, in, uh, of participation in the first CNCA school, which took place in last, last autumn in Almaty, Kazakhstan. Um, participants of the school became three Caucasus countries, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and five Central Asia countries, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, as you can see on this slide. In addition to geographical locations and historical features, uh, the majority of adult um, populations speak Russian language. So, why I, I decided to apply for participation in the school when I heard about it? One of the reasons is because it was the first and biggest activity of ESPE in my own country. I wanted to see teaching, teaching by professors from other countries whose articles I have read, I have previously read. Previously, I participated many times in various postgraduate courses, and now I can compare training courses. As you can see in the previous slide, the Caucasus and Central Asia is a very large area, and we rarely meet with uh, colleagues from this region, so it was interesting and useful to see them and learn how the pediatric endocrinology develop in neighboring countries. What is my view to the CNCA school as a fellow? The important point is bilingualism of the school, since not all the participants speak English at a sufficient level. We had an opportunity to prepare ourselves for studying using e-learning portal, which was in two languages. Uh, the course was very interactive. Each participant had the opportunity to ask any questions at any time. All course participants have experience in pediatric endocrinology, so the course was advanced. Main topic uh, you can see on the slide. Uh, each discussed topic had an, an emphasis on a multidisciplinary approach. So, also, um, there were presentations of research projects with the opportunity to get feedback from other professors and participants. Uh, what opportunities I received after CNCA school attending? I started to use e-learning portal and Caucasus forum in my daily work and will decision making. We have subsequent access to all information from the course. I keep in touch with colleagues from other regions of Kazakhstan and from the neighboring countries. Now, I always use the detec detective investigation technique in my clinical case presentations. It's really interesting. Knowledge I received in the school helped in my following stage of preparation. This year I graduated a uh, three month as per clinical fellowship in Glasgow, as Rasa said. I'm going to do deeper research in the field of pediatric endocrinology about DSD in children from Kazakhstan. Finally, I want to say thank you for the idea for such school uh, to all professors, Professor Rasa, and to people involved in the organization procedures. Thank you.